Today we're going to be testing the Godox 128, the Parabolics 45, and the Glow Profond to see how they compare to the brown color Para 133. Here we have the brown color Para 133. Now I'm going to start with this one because this is what I consider the one to beat. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to parabolic modifiers, uh, umbrella, uh, this is the one. This is the one that I want the others to try to match. So if I could find something like the Godox or the Parabolics or even the Globe Profond, if they're able to get close to this one or match it for a much lower price, then we have a winner, right? But I don't think it's going to be easy. And we'll, the test will show some of the results and you'll see, we'll be able to evaluate them on your own and pick one you think is the best. In the end, at the end of the day, it's, it's your choice, right? Uh, I'll show you the images. Um, maybe I will have a different opinion on the images than you do, and that's perfectly fine. You will pick the one that works for you. Um, and I, I'm planning to do the same thing. I, I'm discovering things right now, just as you will. I'm doing this uh, for the audio, for you guys, viewers as well, but also for myself, because I wanted to find out which one fits my needs the best. Um, so I'm very excited about doing the test and I'm waiting right now and as I'm filming this, I'm about two hours away from the model to arrive so we can do the final shoot here in the studio. So as far as uh, setting this up, this is the, one of the great features about this one is how easy it is to set up. Uh, basically you have four knobs here, uh, handles. All you have to do is the one that says number one is the one that you're going to pull first. So go low here and push those two and then turn it around. Pull the R2 down, and here we go. That easy. Already set up, just two. With the Godox, it's similar. You have a couple of rods that you turn, very simple. With the Parabolics, it's more complicated. You have all the rods that you have to snap and then Velcros. And with the Profon, it's also snapping all the, uh, the rods. So as far as setting up, this one and the Godox are the fastest. Now, if you're working in studio all the time, then you might not be concerned about this. You'll probably just set it up once and most of the time it's gonna be set up on the stand, right? But when you're on the field, it's a different story. Uh, I did a shoot where you will be seeing some footage and, and, and photos, which was outdoors and we were like uh, high uh, uh, teens, like maybe like 14, 16 degrees first, and then we moved, it was like 20s, so which is still very cold when you're outdoors, like for four hours, like I was shooting and your fingers begin to get numb, or if you're wearing thick gloves, it's kind of hard to deal with all the knots and, and, and the, uh, adjusting the rubs and snapping them and then Velcros and all that stuff. This is so easy. I mean, even with the gloves, I was just easy to just snap it, put it there, and I'm ready to shoot. And if I want to move and I need to put it in the car, I don't have to be taking all that stuff down. It's just a couple of handles, it's shut down again, put it in the car, move to the new location, put it back again. So. It's very simple. When it's outdoors, it's just a lifesaver for me, at least. It's just, it, it pretty much this is one of the main things that I like about it, besides the awesome light that it creates. Uh, as far as uh, the materials, I'm gonna try to get some uh, nice photos of the close-up to compare them all. But uh, it has the port here, which you'll see my fingers through it. Right here, hopefully that shows. And the Godox, which I'm using the Godox AD600 Pro with extension head, the connector fits through here just perfectly fine, as does with the Godox uh, Para 128 and with the Parabolix 45. So they all three fit this perfectly fine. The only one that I have issues with is the Glow Profond, which uh, for some reason it doesn't quite fit, but it's still, uh, you can make it work. I think Robert Hall did, but I didn't want to break it, so I decided to just not try it, but this one works fine as long as the other two. So let's move on to the other soft boxes so you can take a look at how they look. And as I mentioned, I don't actually have that footage, so we're just gonna move on to the actual test. But before that, I wanted to give a big shout out to my friend Abe Kerland from BNH, because thanks to him uh, working with BNH, and they were able to give me the loaners of the Godox and the brown color so that I could perform this test. So thank you so much for trusting me and uh, hopefully we can continue working together in the future. So let's go on with the test.
Before we begin, I wanted to uh, explain that I decided to do several sessions, and most of them are just myself, uh, but I do have a model for one of the sessions. And the reason for this is when you're testing uh, lighting modifiers like this, it's it's very complicated to get exact positioning, and, and you want the shadows and the highlights, everything has to be very precise. So I, I use laser pointers, laser measuring tapes, everything to try and make it as as accurate as possible. So when you're switching the softboxes, you get get it the next one in the same position or as close as possible. So that that's what doesn't uh, invalidate the test because you know if you move it a few inches this way, the angle is not the right one. Then suddenly you are not accurately comparing them. So it takes a lot of effort, and I decided to do many sessions that way. Even if there's some errors in some of the photos, you can see a trend. Uh, if you start noticing that hey, I always like X or Y product then that's a strong possibility that this is the one for you instead of just showing you a couple of photos and then hey i, I made a mistake on that photo and, and then you thought that mistake was actually something that you liked uh, but it wasn't an accurate representation of how they compare it's just that maybe i missed it uh, the angle or or the exposure wasn't the same for both and things like that so by providing you more samples you you get a bigger bulk of uh, photos to look at. And then from that pool of photos, you can like pick the ones that you think are, are the best comparisons. And then hopefully that helps you buy the right product for your uh, photography. So with that said, here we go with the first test. This is the Para 133. All the photos will be available for downloads and they'll be labeled like this and also on the name. So it'll make it easier for you guys to compare. And then we're going to be noticing, again, that we're looking at modifiers, right? And the light is the same for all of them, the AD600 Pro with extension head. And the cache light will give us an idea of whether I was pretty accurate in the position. And I think that all four has the cache light in the pretty much the same spot. So that's a good thing. So taking a look at the Para 133, now we're going to go to the 128, the, uh, the Godox 128. And you notice how much the background changes. Now the exposure we're all uh, measured with the Siconic 858D. So they should be very close. And I took many photos just to try and pick the ones that were more accurate, just in case. But here you have the Para, uh, the Godox uh, Para 128 and the Glow Profond. They look pretty similar, actually. You can even see the background. The lighting is uh, similar, but uh, on the rendition on the on the face, it's not a big difference between these two actually. Now, when you compare the, either of them to the uh, Para One Thirty Three, the brown color, to me this is a huge difference. I can see that the background how how the light is actually focused. And by the way, this is flooded, which means that the light uh, is at the at the edge of the modifier. And then there will be some samples with the mid position and then the focused, which is when it's all the way inside the, the modifier. So this is flooded or the, uh, full outside. So again, and now look at the para 133, how it compares to the parabolics. Now these two are a lot closer. Now you can pick your personal favorite. I still like the para 133 more. There's something about the rendition that just gives me a product that feels like it's almost ready to go. I mean, the skin, everything seems to be just nicer, but the para is not, the parabolics is not far in my opinion and way closer than the other two. I mean, parabolics to the Godox, this doesn't even look like the same thing. This just looks like a soft box to me at least. And the Grow Profound, same, very similar to the Godox. Now keep in mind that when the Godox uh, was announced, I was really thrilled about it because the the setup mod uh, procedure for the Godox is a lot easier than the Parabolics. And it's very close to the to the Para 133, the brown color. And unfortunately, I had footage of all of them, but somehow I managed to lose all the footage. I don't know what it is. So the only thing that I was able to rescue was that one introduction showing the, the brown color, which was one of the bad takes that I was I wasn't going to use, but I couldn't find the other, so I figured I'll just put that there and, and 
well, it's better than nothing, but yeah, the, the Godox is a lot easier to set up than the Parabolics and the Glowprofon, and that comes into play, especially if you are outdoors, not so much indoors, but if you have it all there in the studio set up, who cares? But if you're outdoors and working under harsh conditions, like what I, I, what I talked about that, uh, freezing conditions, yeah, you, you start having issues trying to put those modifiers together. So, so well, that's one of the reasons I felt the Godox was going to be the one for me because it's cheaper than the brown color with the fast uh, setup. But unfortunately, right now, what I'm looking at, this doesn't give me the parabolic look. Here's the para, uh, the brown color. This is the parabolics fairly close to me. And then the Godox and then the Glow Profound. I mean, you are, you can be the judge yourself, which one you like. If you feel that this is not the difference or even the Glow Profound is good enough, then. But uh, for my money right now, this will be the one. And the Parabolics, which is much cheaper and the Bro Color is a great option as well. So this is just one of the tests. I have several more to show you. So let's move to the next one. So next we have the uh, mid position for the umbrellas. Uh, starting again with the Para 133. So here's the brown color. Here is the Godox. And here is the, uh, the Glow Profound. And finally the Parabolics. So taking a look. Uh, the position of the cache light should be all very accurate. Yes. So comparing the para or the brown color to the Godox, you can see again on the background, the lighting is different. The light seems to be just splashing more all over instead of having that focused, that uh, um, para umbrella or true parabolic should have. Now let's see how it compares to the parabolics. So the parabolics has that focus, but it's a bit different. If you notice, uh, it seems to be a bit more here. The brightness seems to be focused around here, like a halo, where the parabolics hits more on this right side and then it goes darker on the left side. Uh, so it, it doesn't seem to be quite capturing the same look as the parabolics at the brown color, but it's not that far, uh, at least compared to the others like this one, which is more splash like the Godox. And in this case, the Godox actually is better than the than the Glow. You can see it, it keeps more of that look, the Parabolics. It just doesn't quite match what the what the brown color is doing. But uh, in this particular position and this uh, shoot, uh, I feel the the glow is the weakest, and then the Godox will be, let's say, yeah, the Godox will be third, and then we got the Parabolics, and of course the, the brown color to me, because the, the node here. But again, download them, check them out, and you decide which one you like. This is just my opinion. Uh, I prefer the look of the brown color. If you feel differently, that's perfectly fine. So I'm, I'm not going to take uh, too long with them. I'm just going to point out some of the things that I like uh, because there's so many. But yeah, just just the basics of how, what I'm looking at is how the, the light fall off is, the, how is it uh, highlights, if there's any harsh uh, highlights or the shadows and, and how it splashes in the background versus how it hits the subject. So those are the things that I want to take a look when using a parabolic umbrella, how the focus, because that's the key, how it's able to focus at the, the beams of light, uh, collimate and all that stuff, instead of just like becoming a, a fancy uh, softbox. So let's move to the focused position. Here we have now the focused, which again is when the, the light is all the way inside the umbrella. And we start with the brown color para. So this is how this one looks. This would be kind of like a harsher, more uh, fashion style of uh, uh, lighting. Then we have the Godox. So the Godox and the brown color. Again, as usual, pretty different look. Even though my the, my position on the face is different on the on the brown color, unfortunately. So this might not be the best comparison, but 
I just figured I would throw it in and we have more to check later. So and then between the Godox and the uh, Glow, you can see here. I think the Glow might look a bit more than like the uh, brown color, but again, it, it fails to create the, a more of a halo effect where the lighting is more uh, concentrated. This one seems a bit more bland here, like like Carl Taylor likes to say, wishy wash look. And then the parabolics, it's a, it's an interesting look. Um, reminds me a bit of when I'm using the uh, the Mola Demi, for example, with a grid, a very focused. And, and I kind of like this one. I, I think, well, for the dramatic purpose of, of this type of lighting, I think the parabolics and focus mode, I actually like it more than the others. This one just becomes, I mean, you can tell how how different this is. And if you look at the cash, uh, cash light, they're in, uh, on the same spot. So cash light is uh, pretty precise in the positioning of the of the light. So so here we got the brown color and then the parabolics and completely different look from these two on this particular shot, at least. Uh, maybe I messed up. We'll see when we have other focus shots to compare, but for now, I don't know which one is your favorite. I will have to say, for my taste, Parabolics on this one, and then Brown Color, Godox, and then this would be probably the last one, the Glow. So just my opinion, of course. Let's move on to a different shoot that I did. Okay, so here we have another session that I did. Again, just myself. This one I wanted to show my guy like, meet standing and and uh, just to see how the shadows also look on the, on the right side, to my right side. So uh, checking the cache lights really quick. They look to be pretty good positioning. So here we go. Got the para, the Godox in this case, and then the parabolics. So as seems to be the trend, the brown color and the parabolics look more uh, similar. And then the Godox is not. This is not giving me the parabolic look, uh, in my opinion. To my eyes, this is not something I like. This one definitely, and this one is doing its job too. I still prefer the uh, the brown color, and this is why. You can see where this one is more like wishy-washy, like uh, Carl Tyler says, right? It's more like a, a, a softbox look, splashing light everywhere. Then we get the parabolics. Nice here, it's controlling the shadows and, and giving a nice rendition. The right side though, or, or to my left side, would be uh, a bit bright. Now the brown color is focusing this light precisely what it needs to be. It's like I, I applied some vignettes or something, but now it's just how it looks. So parabolics, brown color, and then Godox. To me, the Godox is out of the race between the parabolics and the brown color. Which one you like more? Price and is a consideration for most of us, of course. Uh, but yes, I, I, I'm always leaning towards the, the brown color when it comes to the floated position. Let's check the mid position. So this is the uh, brown color para and mid position, followed by the Godox and then parabolics. Now, one thing I want you to once again notice is uh, the brown color and the parabolics, they share the, uh, the similar look here because on this side of my face where it shows a, uh, like a highlight on my face and you can see the cache light is pretty accurately positioned on all three photos. So it barely moves from the eye, uh, but you can see how with the parabolics, this, uh, my left side of the face is highlighted, more uh, punchier highlight look. Same thing with the brown color. Uh, but with this one, with the Godox, it becomes more of a, an even, flat look, which once again, to me, gives the impression of a, just a regular softbox, not a, a, a true parabolic. So this is in the midpoint. So this is my problem with this Godox, is that it's just, I don't see the parabolic uh, look at all so far. Uh, the parabolics is, Pretty good there. 
but when I compare the parabolics to the brown color, I still prefer the brown color on the mid here. This it, it's a bit harsh for me. This mid it almost it's closer to a focused look, whereas the the brown color looks more of a of a I would say soft box type of. I always feel like the mid position is sort of a soft box look, but it's not that uh, flat. Obviously, as a softbox, and and then you got the Godox. Now, if you like the Godox, that's great. Uh, I just, to my my point of view, is that I is the least one of the, of these that I prefer. Uh, I do like the background here better, but um, my choice here will be the brown color, number one, and then number two, it's it's up there. It, neither of them, uh, neither of the other two, is really woe me. This one I like the control on the backgrounds a bit more, but I don't like that it's the flat look. This one looks more like where the light is coming from that side. It should be highlighting the face more and then falling off as it is. Not like not like this, which is kind of my flatter. But yeah, this one just seems to me like it's almost a finished look. Where this one I will have to soften a little bit. The highlight uh, it's a bit more harsh, less less flattering to the skin compared to this. Again, this is just my opinion. So let's check the focus one and see how it looks. And here we have the focus version. So Para 133, Godox, and Parabolics. Now the slight discrepancy on the white balance, please ignore. Just try to focus on the highlight shadows and the skin, how it looks and all that. So as you can see, the Para, it's a more focused beam where the the face seems to be getting the, the light, which it's where I pointed it out at. As you can see, the the catch light is barely moves from that point on the, the angle on the eye, so it's pretty accurately placed. And I try to place myself exactly on the same spot. Now, once again, I tend to favor the parabolics when it comes to the focus, just because of this intense dramatic look where the light is pretty much just on my face and then gets it more shadowy on the backdrop it reminds me a lot of, again of the mola demi with a grid or similar now when i compare to the to the brown color there's some things i like about the brown color even with this harsh light the brown color is very flattering it's it's more it's less uh, dramatic for like uh in terms of the harsh shadows, even though you can see like on my fingers, the shadows are pretty harsh and in my neck, but there's something about how it renders that the highlights don't seem like they are too harsh on the skin. They, they just seem softer to me. It's hard to explain, but whatever it is doing is really, really nice. But overall, I tend to favor this look just because it, the background looks uh, darker and it just pops more to my eyes. But uh, there's some things that I like about the brown color too. So it's it's a it's it's there between those two. Now when it comes to the Godox, it's it's not bad, but it's just it's just lacking. Once again, it just doesn't doesn't get that pop that you get from these two. You can see boom, boom, and then you go to this one, it just falls flat. So uh, it's a toss up between those two. I'll probably go with the parabolics on these two right now but i could i could go see, uh, see it going either way uh, so and there's the godox i don't have a pro phone on this one so sorry so let's uh, move to yet another shoot that i did okay so this is another shoot that i did once again just me let's take a look at the cache lights really quick they seem to be pretty much on point so now i consider the evaluation uh, valid so Para 133, flooded. This is the Glow Profound. And this is the Parabolics. Right away, to me, this is just a softbox. Doesn't look at all parabolic. I don't like it. If you like it, perfect. It's not a bad look, in, in, but for a parabolic, this is not the look that I'm expecting. So I'm going to focus on this. The brown color. I mean, this to me just looks outstanding. It's like, I can pretty much just retouch this a tiny bit and it's ready to go. The, the lining is just on point. 
the dark gray it's just like how i like it the shadows look uh, deep and uh just beautiful rendition of this game and this is the parabolics parabolics is close and this one just seems to be lacking that punch on the highlights you can see on my face and when i switch to the parabolics it just misses that sparkle extra spark that it has on the brown color and then on the backdrop looks similar just a bit lighter so it's not a huge difference and when I mean, you consider the price you might be like well there's no way i'm gonna pay that much money for this but there's something about it that just pops when i see the the brown color and this flooded and it's pretty much 100 percent of the time i prepare the brown color look and uh and flooded uh, but the parabolics is definitely the second one here no question and this will be the third because there's nobody else competing but let's see how they fare on the mid position so now we have the mid position so parable uh brown color para the glow profound and the parabolics so let me know which one you prefer on this particular test And they are all pretty good, pretty similar. So the mid position seems to be one where they are mostly good, but they still have like a, a pretty distinct look, in my opinion. Like from the parabolics of this one, I like the parabolics because of how the highlights are in the face and then the shadows in the back, as always. This one is a bit more flat, where it illuminates the back more than the parabolics, and then the brown color, it's somewhere unique uh, when it comes to the mid position see how it highlights here and then the face and it gets a very flattering look to the face and then kind of drops after that so i guess it depends on which look you prefer but yeah i tend to like the the mid look of the brown color maybe that's what i'm expecting to see on the mid position and then follow very closely by the parabolics and then but yeah I, I just like this better for me and i think it creates the biggest difference between the flooded the mid position the focus and then we have this for the uh, glow profound but let's check how they look on the focused for this one and finally we have the focused version of this photo so brown color I'm checking the cache lights really quick. They look to be really good on point. So brown color, the glow profound, and the parabolics. Now, as you remember, the parabolics have been my favorite, uh, mostly for these focused ones. So on this one, it seems to be very close to, to the brown color, uh, except the brown color always gives that extra smoothness to the skin. It looks more finished. Uh, but and I like overall I like I tend to like the brown color on this one better but the parabolics is doing really good and then the profound not for me I I want my my focus to yeah it has the, the look the focus in terms of the harshness because of that dramatic uh more uh, fashiony style of look like almost like a bare flash look uh but it just doesn't compare to what these two are doing, in my opinion. So between these two will be my winner. In this case, I will go with the brown color, uh, closely followed by the parabolics, and then the profound will be my last one. It's, it's just not doing it for me. So I have one last photo. It's done with a model that I was uh, I got for this shoot. and. Uh, so hopefully time will be better. <laughs> so you won't have to keep staring at my face for the last test. So let's jump on that one. So we have the last uh, photo shoot that I did with the model this time. And we're starting with the flooded for the Para uh, 133. Uh, first, take a look at the cache lights. So the cache lights are on their exact position on the eye. So here we go. This is uh, the brown color. The Godox 128 and the Parabolics. So right away you can see that 
both the parabolics and the brown color have this extra punch, especially the brown color. And this one just feels flat. I mean, you can tell right away switching here back and forth is just just loses all the spark on the skin or the shadow, the highlights and then the backdrop, everything just loses the punch. Now, of course, you can pause process and do whatever you want and, and get it similar and, and that's fine, but you have to have to consider uh, if you are doing a lot of work, do you want to go through all this? Do you want to post process everything? Is it worth investing in something that's going to give you an, an out of the camera product that is going to be ready to go? And that's my, my thing. Um, what the uh, brown color gives me uh, or will give me is a, a very finished product right from the get go. Now, I don't have the brown color. I don't have it yet at the time of doing this video. Uh, I do have the parabolics, but um, this is one of the things that uh, you have to consider. You can tweak things, you know, with Photoshop, you can create magic, but how much time do you have to spend to get the same goal or the same finished product and how many photos you have to edit? So if you're doing limited amount of work, then you can get away with us doing the post-processing and that's it. If you're doing more then you know you know the answer then now in terms of comparison between the brown color and the parabolics they're very similar the parabolic seems to be missing some of that punch uh, maybe it's just missing a little a bit of a bit of a of the exposure but they were all measured and then when you look at the highlights the brightness level on the forehead for example is very similar on all of them it's just the difference is mostly how the light has been uh, rendered and, and thrown at the subject. The way the brown color is drawing the light, it's very different from what the uh, Godox is doing. So, I mean, you can just see all over how beautiful this light looks. At least to me, this is the clear winner when it comes to flooded. Now, when it comes to the rest of it, you decide which one waits for you. The photos again will gonna be are gonna be on the link to download, so you can test and decide which one works for you. Let's check the mid the mid uh, photos and see how they look. Here we have the mid position for the this particular photo, and we have the brown color, the Godox, and the parabolics. And as you can see, the cache light is in the right spot. Okay, and let's take a look. So the mid position seems to always be a bit more similar between them. Uh, even then, uh, I still prefer the, the brown color here. It's just, it's just beautiful the way it looks. Um, between the parabolics and the, and the Godox, I definitely also prefer the parabolics. It just has a bit more spark to it, more punch to the image. So nothing has changed. Um, I still prefer the same order, pretty much from color parabolics and then Godox or glow if, if it was on the run. So let me take a look at that focused and see how it looks with the model. And finally, here we have the focused version of this uh, particular photo. If we take a look at the cache lights here, they're all in the same spot. You can see the stars on the parabolics. This one's a bit more round and this one's a bit more round. They're all focused and this is how they look. So this is the brown color, the Godox and the parabolics. So between the brown color and the parabolics, uh, the brown color it seems to define more the cheek, uh, mo muscles here and the shadows. It's a bit more focused, more intense. The parabolic is a bit more, um, a bit more soft, I guess. It's a bit softer in my opinion, but also the the position of the faces are the same, so it creates a bit of a harder. Uh, look to the to determine whether it's uh, the light of or or just the the angle of the face, but in any case, you can still notice how much darker the 
backdrop looks on the on the parabolics it's a bit overall of a more harsh uh photo but i mean the skin looks really good so i, I don't know it's a toss-up uh, overall i will probably pick the the wrong color i'm sorry the parabolics on the focus uh they are quite different looking though so you know your pick now the godox it's you know once again flatter it just doesn't doesn't look like the parabolic umbrellas that the other two look like on its own it's a, it's a fine looking photo i suppose i mean it's nothing wrong with it in in terms of the rendition it just doesn't have the spark you can i mean when you switch between them it just looks flat nothing interesting about it but that's just me so once again download all the photos and then you can uh pick your favorites so let's go ahead and wrap this up with some of my thoughts uh basically my conclusion uh, my summary for all four uh, softboxes that i tested today before going to my final thoughts i wanted to just show a uh, a uh, small close up of the uh, cache lights. So this is the typical brown color cache light, kind of like a green light with that you know darker center. On the Godox, this uh, it doesn't quite achieve the same dark center, which uh, probably accounts for the much brighter look. It's not like a softbox. And then the parabolics is. Uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, it, it has like a, a dark core, but then in the middle, in the middle, it has like a bright spot because of how the it bounces light in the right in the center, and that probably accounts for the slightly harsher look that I was uh, mentioning, where I will I will need a bit more cleaning on the skin because it's not as flattening as you can see in this close up versus the the brown color. And I tried different things, trying to kill that center, uh, but I couldn't kill that core brightness. So, but yeah, this is how they compare. This is the flooded. Well, it turns out that I had one more photo to share from the same session. This one is uh, farther back with the modifiers to give you an idea what how they perform at seven feet from the uh, subject, and uh, a, a more full body shot or, or three quarters. So we have the para first followed by the Godox and then the Parabolics. Now this is the flooded or defocused. And as been the pattern before, you can see that the Para gives this look. The parabolics is a more similar look. And then the Godox is more like a splash of light, like a softbox. You can see that there's no control on the light falling on the back on the backdrop. Now, is it is it a bad photo itself? No, I mean, it's just a soft light, but it's just like a softbox. You can get this with pretty much any softbox. If you want this look or this look of a parabolic, then this one is not giving it to you. And I will show you how they, the different looks from the same uh, umbrella uh, are as I switch through the defocus, mid and focus for each of them. So you can see what you should be getting and what you're not getting. Let's go to the uh, brown color mid focus, Godox mid focus, and then parabolics mid focus. So the brown color, parabolics, and then Godox. And finally, let's jump to the brown color focused, Godox focused, and parabolics focused. As you can see, the cache light is in the same spot of the eye. I tried my best to keep it all very, very uh, controlled with lasers and angles and all this stuff. So, but you know, it's, nothing is perfect. So I try my best. Hopefully, it's good enough. But this is what I wanted to show you. Like, look how the brown color looks when it's defocused. And now look at the background. See, and you know, look at the whole thing. But if you look at the background, this is one easy way for me to tell when it's doing the actual uh, um, parabolic look. So look at the background, it's gonna be dark when it's focused. It's gonna be lighter when it's at mid focus. And then it's gonna be 
darkest when it's focused. And that's the pattern you'll normally see on a true parabolic modifier. If you go to the parabolics, so it's dark, the mid is lighter, and then the focus is darker. But when we go to the Godox, we go defocused, the mid it's lighter, I guess, and then the focus is even lighter. It almost looks like a bare flash. And, and this is the problem I'm having with this modifier. When and the, the reason you see so many sessions that I did is because I started doing this, it was supposed to be brown color, parabolics, and the glow profound. And mainly the competition was the, the parabolics and the and the brown color. But during my testing and, and practicing and checking the how they perform, the Godox announcement for the parabolic came out and I decided to push this bag and just hold on polishing this until I have my get my hands on the on the Godox. So I finally did, thanks to my friends from B and H. And thus I ended up adding more, more tests, which is good because you got more to choose from and, and make sure that the that you see a pattern of which ones you prefer on the different tests that I provided. But I have to say, um I I, I was disappointed uh with the Godox. You know, when it came out, when I saw the or the information about it, the easy to set up, the, the build quality looks good. Everything seemed to be pointing to the one that will be, for me, the one to move to because the price was easier to handle than the brown color. And I was expecting the quality to be very close to it, closer than the parabolics, while having a much easier to set up uh, system, right? But uh, as you can see, it's, it's not doing it. It's just not delivering a true parabolic setup. I mean, between the defocus, the the mid, and the focus, this this is not at all like what you get from the, the brown color, for example. Look at this. Or the parabolics. Is it a, a bad uh, lighting? Well, it's it's not bad lighting. I mean, it's a sliding, but it's just that if you want a parabolic look, you're missing all this punch. You see the contrast and the control of the light, and at the same time, it's a flattering light. This looks more like a bare flash, and so th this is the kind of things that you're not getting by by going with a with the Godox in this case. So, yeah, it, it was a letdown. Uh, it was high on my list. And I was kind of biased to make it work, and I just I'm just confused what happened here. Uh, was it not tested? Is my unit bad? Um, if Godox is watching this video and you think that this unit is not behaving as it should, do you want to send me one for a retest? I'll be happy to get a loaner and test it and send it back because I had high hopes for it, and, and it just baffles me that it's performing like this. So in summary, what are my thoughts about all these softboxes? Well, start with the Glow Profond. It's the cheapest. Is it a true parabolic? No. It's the softbox with an adjusting rod. So if you get your expectations low and you don't expect it to behave like a true parabolic and give you all the specific looks, you can still get the job done with it. I've done it, so you know, but just don't expect it to be a, a brown color replacement on the chip because it's unfortunately it's not. I was hoping it was. That's why I bought it. And I had the 35 too. And I even tried the 55 before. And even had the 77 and I sold it because that one was the worst. Uh, I mean, this one, the 45 or 47, uh, it's a lot closer than the, than the 78 or 77 inch uh, Profond. That one was terrible. I didn't like that one at all. And uh, the Godox, like I said, unfortunately, disappointing. I was biased to like it, especially because I have so many Godox products. I love all my Godox AD400, 200, 600 Pro, you name it. I have all sorts of Godox gear because I love the brand, but the Parabolics just didn't do it for me. And then we have Parabolics which is the closest 
to the true parabolic or at least to the performance of the brown color of all this here. And uh, it's way cheaper. So if you like what you're looking, like you're seeing from the parabolics, if it's close enough to the brown color, then, uh, you know, you're saving a lot of money. But the things with the parabolics is setting it up. It's a pain because of the Velcro thing mostly. And if you have it in the studio, like I said, it doesn't matter much because if you have it all set up all the time, who cares then? But if you're working like me, I like to work outdoors and switch uh, locations often during the shoot. Or if you're looking at working in a freezing environment, like I did one of the shoots that I've been sharing some photos during this review, you know, it's, it's it gets hard to be taking all those Velcros and, and knobs and back and forth and setting it up and breaking it down to move. And when your fingers are freezing or you have gloves, it's, it's not so easy. With the wrong color, you just those handles, boom, boom, and you're done. Of course, you're paying for that, but you're also paying for the extra, in my opinion, the extra quality of the light, the, the rendition that you're getting from it is pretty much a done deal. You know, you take the picture and a couple of blemishes here and you're ready to go. This photo is ready. You don't have to be tweaking anything else on it. So I value that because, uh, you know, time is money. So, uh, you know, you spend money on something like this and it's a lot of money. There's there's no arguing that. And for for a lot of people, including myself, the parabolics is also a lot of money, right? Because you see so many $100 modifiers, but you just think that they tend to last longer when you spend more money. And this is not something you change all the time. Like, you know, I've gone through Sony to Canon recently and I change bodies more often when when they come with features that I know that I can use to improve my workflow. But your modifiers are there, you know, are gonna stay with you for years and years and years. And and I can tell you because I have a, like Mola Demi for like ever, you know, so and some other umbrellas and things that I still have. So it's an investment, but it's to me it's just like a power supply on you on my computer. You know, I always go with it high-end power supply because I'm going to keep that thing for years and years. You know, my CPU, my motherboard is going to change, but that power supply is going to be there all the time. So to me, that that is important to spend the money on something that I'm going to keep using all the time instead of some, some going, something cheaper or something that is making me work harder to achieve the looks that I want. Now, I'm not affiliated with Brown Color. I don't even own the Para 133, but I'm going to get one soon, I hope. Not that things are normalizing a little bit after COVID. So those are my thoughts. Uh, my number one goal is to get the part 133. Uh, the second spot would be to the parabolics. I think on the market, I don't see anything else that actually can deliver a, a closer look to the true parabolic, like the, or at least a closer look to the brown color than the parabolics. You know, the Godox failed, the Glow failed, and a lot of those cheap ones that you will see from all sorts of brands, you know, they're just parabolic in names. Like Carl Taylor likes to call them, they are parabolics, and <laughs> I have to agree. Most of them are. So, you know, if you buy them, just have the expectations that you're mostly likely buying a glorified uh, softbox with an adjusting rod. Anyways. Please share this video, like, comment, all this helps the channel grow. And as I mentioned, b &H, it's working with me to provide uh, loaners for reviews. So it's very important for you guys to um, help the, the channel grow by commenting. It's free. All you have to do is make a comment, a question, and like the video. That way, you know, the video gets more recommended and b &H sees the, the activity on the video and they understand that it's, it's uh, valuable for them to work with me. Uh, but if nobody's seen the video, nobody's commenting, then there's no incentive for them to keep working with me. And thus my video cannot grow. And then I'm sorry, my channel cannot grow. And then I cannot provide more reviews like this. So I have a couple more new videos coming. There's a comparison of uh, Canon uh, 70 to 200 options for the, for the R5 that I tested, which are the Sigma, Sport, uh, the Canon EF, the uh, version three of the 70 to 200 2.8 and the Canon RF version. So I did a comparison of those three, which I'll be sharing soon. 
But anyways, going back to this video, I hope you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm pretty quick at replying. So just make a comment and I'll be there to let you know what I think. Remember to download the files from the uh, description so you can test and let me know what you think about this test. Thank you for watching.